Well, it's Friday, and that means we get to pick the brains of a top financial executive. Joining us today is Philippe Yalong, CFO of GMA Network. Philip, thanks for joining us. Thank you as well. Thank well, listen, I mean, you know, your first quarter income reached 1 billion pesos. Um, you know, it's already a third of your year-end projections. The question I have is, with the second quarter being unique with election spending, what are we expecting? Well, the bulk of the political advertisement came in towards the, the whole of second quarter. So if we saw a good uh, uh, first quarter performance from the network, probably I think second quarter will be much better. Well, it sounds like you know it, it actually mirrors one of the cabinet secretaries we spoke to about. Even the economy is expected to grow even higher yeah. because of election spending. But one of the things also we're looking at really uh, is GMA's you know uh, streamlining of operations with your RGMA uh, initiative. Is that going to impact the bottom line this year in terms of better uh, operating margins? Well, the the full impact of that streamlining will be affect, will be felt uh, this year. So we expect that that will contribute as well to. Uh, the income of the network. So we're, we're looking at really a better 2016. Yeah, so from a cost management and revenue perspective, it seems like a bumper year. Now, the question I have is in, rela in relation to um, your competitors, for example, mm -hmm. you're actually the second mover or, you know, uh, or the Johnny come lady to the shift, the shift to digital TV. Was there a specific reason for that apart from what Attorney Gozan was talking about monetizing? And what do you think you're going to get by having, being a second mover? Well, not exactly that. I, I agree that we may be the second probably network to go into digital space simply because I guess our competitor needs it much more than us. So, and I think they did that for the simple reason that uh, their, their signal is not as good uh, on the analog system. So it's so, an infrastructure issue. So I, I think it's more of an infrastructure issue. In fact, there is no implementing rules and regulations yet on the ship to digital. As you may know, it, 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 it it's not that easy to ship to digital simply because the the, the Trans, uh, the frequency that will be assigned to you will be the permanent frequency yes. that you will have. So we are right now on a uh, test-based mode right now for our digital signal. In fact, for those TV set that are able to receive the digital signal, they can receive already uh, GMA digital signal. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you're an industry executive with, with a long experience in the broadcast industry. Yeah. What do you think about best practices around the world in light of the fact that the NTC wants to get the full shift into 2020? Do market realities reflect that transition? Well, I guess if you look at the Philippine setting, it's, it's still driven by advertisement, which is uh, different from other countries for, for that matter. Wherein they really have a lot of uh, programs that are really being paid uh, on a per view basis. Like sport is very much uh, popular in, mm -hmm. in uh, other ASEAN countries, it's like football and, and, and the likes. So. But in this country, sport is not that popular yet. So I guess it's, it's, we're really dependent on, on how past, first the, the advertiser will be looking at the new, uh, new, new digital uh, channels that will be coming up as well as the views of the, the viewers on how these things will, 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 will uh, impact them as well. So you're making better second market, as, as second mover advantages based on market realities. Yeah, I, think, I, I guess so. Now, now, speaking of market realities, one of the things in the space of, of the broadcast industry is the opportunity for mergers, joint ventures, acquisitions. What do you see in that space for GMA7? Well, I, I think our, our major shareholders have said that they're open to any proposal that they may have. No? So. Uh, I really don't know whether uh, there are other parties who may be interested, similar to what happened in the previous years, where offer were entertained by our stockholders. Uh, well, it seems to be an interesting year on your own and, and with the prospect of a potential partner. Well, I wish you all the best. Philip, thanks for joining us. Thank you as well.